Well, hi, Confirmation Youth. Uh, welcome to COVID Confirmation. Um, it's going to be a little bit different, but we think we can we can make the best out of this situation. Um, and so here's what we're looking forward to in the future uh, for until we can get back to in-person confirmation. Vicar Kate and I are going to be posting some videos like this um, and having you guys uh, get to watch those videos, which I'm sure you look forward to every week. It'll be the best part of your week. Uh, we're having you engage in a little bit of a lesson at home. You fill out a worksheet. Uh, you have a chance to win Lulu Bucks. Uh, for those that are filling out the worksheet, we're going to pick three winners every week. And uh, each of those winners will get a, a $10 Lulu uh, gift cards, uh, or Lulu Bucks as they call them at Lulu Beans. So uh, there's some good incentives to paying attention and following along. So. Um, we're also going to promise that we're going to keep these relatively short. We think you can do this in less than 20 minutes. So let's get right into it because that 20 minute clock is ticking uh, on my note. Um, even though I don't have a watch, I can still, I just sense it. So first of all, I hope uh, you got mom or dad with you. If you don't, I want you to pause the video because we're going to need mom and dad uh, to be a part of this. And so drag them along. Um, but today we're going to talk a little bit about creation. And I don't, I'm not going to spend time talking about how God created the world because I think, you know, at your age, you've already figured that out, right? You know, you know that the Bible teaches that God created like everything, right? But I want you to know that, that God created you and that God is actively part of creation. That's not a one-time thing. It's still happening all the time. And in scripture, like when people would talk about God, God was such a part of creating them and creating their family that even the name that they used for God reflected God's activity uh, with their family. They would say the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, and, and they would remember their ancestors and that, that that was their God too, that God had been so faithful to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob um, and such a part of their lives that they knew that God was a, a part of their life and a part of their family's life. And so today we're going to have you guys reflect a little bit about what it means to be a part of your family and some of the stories that you tell um, about your family and about uh, ancestors, grandparents, great-grandparents, maybe even your parents. Um, you know, what are those stories? And so I want to talk about uh, um, my great-grandfather, whose name was Edward, and I, I've never met Edward. Edward died long before I was born, but I've heard so many stories that I know how important he was for my father and my grandmother, um, and it, it taught me a lot about what it meant to be uh, a member of my family, and, and I think it even reflects a lot of things about me. So here's one of the things about Edward that I heard. Edward was born, um, his mother got pregnant uh, when she was a teenager, and at that time you definitely had to cover that stuff up, right? So he grew up his entire life um, thinking that his mother was really his sister. His grandparents claimed that, uh, that that was their child and not their child's child, and so they raised him uh, as such, and uh, everyone, even like members of the family, um, never knew that. It took a long time for that to come out, and so, you know, there's this big question mark about who his father actually was, uh, different theories uh, that my family has about that and different possibilities, but that's something um, that, that taught me at a, you know, kind of an early age that, like, nobody's perfect in this world, uh, but we still love them. Them. You know, our family, uh, you're going to make mistakes. We understand that, but we're still going to love you and we're still going to take care of you. That's, that's something that that story taught me. He also, my dad would tell me this all the time. He'd do this thing where they'd be riding in the car. He'd be driving. My dad would be a little kid sitting right next to grandpa and he'd pull out his wallet. Actually, I, I've got mine here. He'd pull out his wallet and he'd throw it down on the dashboard and he'd say, I'll make you a deal, grandson. I will trade you every dollar that you have in your pocket for every dollar that I have in my wallet. And the crazy thing about it is my dad said that sometimes he'd have nothing, wouldn't have a dime, didn't have any money in his wallet whatsoever. Other times, he said he had like hundreds of, hundreds of dollars. He'd just been to the bank or something, and the deal was always the same. Uh, let's see, I right now have... I have $23, which is actually a fairly large amount of cash for me to carry, but $23 if you'd make that trade with me right now. So maybe think about how much money you're carrying around and if that would be a good deal or not. But $23 is in my wallet. And you know, for my dad said, sometimes he'd make that deal and, uh, and grandpa would always keep his promise. The deal would always go through. And sometimes my dad made a lot of money and sometimes my grandpa uh, or, my, or his grandpa would make money off of him, which seems crazy, right? Like you'd think that you'd hold, 
you amend the, the, like the promise, you'd be like, ah, forget about it. I'm not going to take your money. But, but Grandpa Edward did. He took the money. And, and that teaches me uh, that there are winners and losers in life. And, uh, you know, it doesn't mean that we don't love you or it doesn't mean you're always going to be that way. But sometimes you win and sometimes you lose. And that's a reality of what life looks like. Here's the last story I want to share. My grandma talked about this all the time. It was the day that my dad was born. That night, uh, he was way early. You know, she was pregnant. My grandfather, her husband, was off in World War II, and uh, she was, you know, staying with her dad on the farm, and uh, she didn't feel right. She said her stomach kind of hurt, and uh, but it was, it was way too soon to be going into labor, and so that wasn't in her mind whatsoever. She was up like three o'clock in the morning in the kitchen at the farmhouse, thinking that her stomach hurt, couldn't figure out what's going on. My grandpa walked in, put his coat and hat on, my great-grandfather Edward, and said, uh, we're going to the hospital. And she's like, what are you talking about? Like, I'm not, not going into labor. This isn't anything. And uh, this guy who's farmed for so many years looks at her and says, I've watched my cows and I'm watching you. We're going to the hospital. And, and he was right. Uh, all those years with cows going into labor had apparently taught him something. Uh, my dad was born later that night. Again, very premature. Would never have survived if it wasn't for the fact that my grandfather, my great-grandfather, was watching my grandmother and Edward got her to the hospital. Um, that teaches me that my family uh, takes care of one another. And in all of those stories, I think God's presence and faithfulness is involved with that. So here's what I want you guys to do right now. You all have these great stories too, right? It's not just my family that has amazing stories. They're pretty awesome, I think. Uh, but you guys have these great stories. What are your stories? I want you to talk with mom or dad, whoever's sitting next to you. I want you to talk about what are those stories that, that your family talks about. And maybe you already know them. And maybe mom and dad are going to enlighten you as to, you know, where it is that uh, God has showed up in your family's life. Uh, but, you know, don't think of it so much as like a where is God in your family's life. That might be too uh, tough to kind of come up with that. But right now, just what are the stories that your family tells that reflect uh, who you guys might be as a family? But again, just most importantly, what are some of the favorite stories? Pay attention to who those characters in those stories are. Things that you may have been talking about actually for quite some time. So do that and then go online, uh, fill out that form. It's going to ask you to share a little bit about those stories. So make sure you got your story set before you go and fill out that form. Fill out the form, respond to those questions. Should be pretty simple. Just takes a couple minutes and uh, we'll be back next week to award some Lulu Buck winners. Uh, but please take the time, fill out the form, uh, take care of yourselves. Um, we look forward to seeing you guys again really soon in person. Uh, and until then, we're going we're gonna to still be with each other through wonderful technology uh, and sharing some great stories of, of what's going on in our lives and where we've come from. Who is it that's uh, brought us to where we are today? So thanks again for watching the video. Looking forward to hearing some great stories, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.